hello viewers and welcome to my channel uh, today's uh, topic is uh, spinal cord abscess you know uh, but before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel and uh, if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know uh, now come to the topic uh, uh, what is uh, spinal cord abscess you know you know the spinal cord abscess which is also known as uh, sp uh, sorry sca you know and uh, it's a rare condition and that can cause the permanent damage to your spinal cord and an abscess is uh, a swollen area in your tissues that contains the build up of pus you know uh, it happens when uh, uh, injured tissues uh, become infected and your body's immune system sends the white blood cells to uh, help to fight off infection you know and uh, the white blood cells begin to fill the damaged tissue causing the pus to build up you know and pus is in fact the dead white blood cells you know and uh, immune cells and uh, bacteria you know okay so well what you can say these are all the remains of the battlefield you know and uh, you know since the uh, antibiotics have become widespread you know the spinal cord abscesses have become extremely rare you know but if you develop one in that case your doctor will likely use surgery and the antibiotics to treat this one you know and uh, they may also recommend rehabilitative therapy to help you to recover from a, a neurological symptoms you know the next thing is what are the symptoms of the spinal cord abscess you know at first the spinal cord abscess may produce no symptoms but uh, as the infection and the abscess grows you know it can put pressure on your spinal cord and the infection and the pressure can use uh, like uh, uh, you know it is it's, it's potentially uh, a serious condition symptoms such as uh, uh, a sudden onset of pain you know and sharp pain that can radiate to your arms or your legs you know and the weakness that progress rapidly and loss of sensation below the area of the abscess you know paralysis below the area of abscess and uh, loss of control of your bladder and your bowels and fever you know which is a sign of infection you know the next thing is what are the causes well the spinal cord abscess uh, is usually caused by the introduction of bacteria into the spinal cord you know and the most common uh, bacteria that cause the spinal cord abscess uh, come from the staphylococcus and uh, streptococcus species you know and uh, once these uh, uh, strep bacteria they are inside your body they may find a place to live and grow in your uh, spinal cord you know and your body sends white blood cells to fight the bacteria uh, causing pus to build up and as the that's how the abscess is formed you know and other possible causes include like boils that develop on your skin you know uh, septicemia or uh, uh, injury which is caused by the foreign objects such as the bullet or knife you know or maybe the road accidents you know and the dermal sinus which means that uh, uh, a channel that can form between your skin and the spinal cord spinal canal you know while you are developing in uh, yeah, uh, uterine you know, and uh, tuberculosis. So these are the common causes, you know. The next thing is, what are the risk factors for the development of a spinal spinal cord abscess? You know, you are at high risk uh, if you have a history of uh, using like uh, anticoagulant agents, which means uh, the blood thinning agents, you know, on the long term basis, you know, weakened immune system, Crohn's disease and uh, maybe ruptured gallbladder and the 
habit of injecting the uh, illegal drugs, you know, or illegal drugs, you know. The next, how do doctors diagnose that uh, someone has uh, the spinal cord abscess, you know? You know, the symptoms are often vague and maybe similar to those uh, many other conditions, you know. So as a result, it may be challenging for your doctor to uh, diagnose these uh, spinal cord abscesses, you know. And uh, your doctor may use multiple diagnostic tests and uh, tools, you know, including the blood tests, imaging tests and uh, lumbar puncture tests, you know. You know, your doctor may start with the blood test. So it will draw blood from your body and send it to the lab for the evaluation, you know. And uh, that will be like complete blood count or erythrocyte sedimentation rate, you know, known as ESR, you know, and uh, C reactive protein levels, you know. And the lumb lumbar puncture test, uh, uh, your doctor may collect the sample of your cerebrospinal fluid for the analysis. And uh, cerebrospinal fluid is a clear, is a watery fluid that surrounds your spine and brain, you know, and it helps to cushion and protect them, you know. And to collect the sample of your cerebrospinal fluid, your doctor will perform a lumbar puncture, also known as spinal tap, you know. And uh, they will insert a needle into your spinal cavity uh, and the purpose is to collect the sample of the fluid and uh, then they will send it to the lab, you know, with the technicians will check if there is any sign of infection. You know. And the imaging tests may include like x-rays or maybe CT scan or maybe MRI, you know. So, by looking in, uh, into these tests, you know, doctor will diagnose the spinal abscess, you know. So once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options? Well, the early diagnosis and the treatment is very important, you know. And if it's left untreated, uh, it can burst, uh, and uh, then uh, there will be the millions of the bacteria that spread throughout your body, you know. Okay, so once your doctor has located the uh, spinal cord abscess, you know, uh, they will have to drain or they have to remove the abscess, you know. And for example, uh, they may ref uh, refer you to a surgeon for the, like, uh, laminectomy, you know. Uh, it's a procedure. Uh, where you will be placed into the anesthesia and then your surgeon will open the abscess carefully and drain all the pus and the fluid inside, you know. And uh, this will uh, rinse it and uh, uh, destroy it with the sterile saline fluid, you know, uh, to wash away any remaining bacteria, you know. And uh, uh, if they find like a kind of a dermal sinus, you know, uh, they will typically excise the sinus, you know. And uh, your doctor will likely prescribe the antibiotics and uh, after the procedure, you know. And uh, these drugs will help to kill the disease which is causing bacteria in your system and prevent the risk of uh, further infection, you know. And uh, the next thing is, and the very important things are what are the complications or the possible potential complications, you know, of the spinal cord abscess, you know. Well, the dangerous potential complications of the spinal cord abscess uh, are uh, recurrent infections, you know, persistent pain, uh, weakness, uh, numbness, uh, loss of uh, uh, feeling below the uh, point of abscess, you know, and uh, loss of the bowel or the urinary control and uh, even death, you know, if it spreads to the uh, blood, you know. And, uh, it can also cause the neurological symptoms and the complications that persist for weeks or even years after your abscess is drained or removed, you know. So uh, you may need uh, like neuro rehabilitation to treat these symptoms. And the other complications can include like uh, dysuria or uh, stress incontinence. So dysuria means uh, difficult or the painful urination and if you have the stress incontinence it's hard to control your bladder under the physical stress such as when you are laughing or when you are nervous you know so it's hard uh, you know well the outlook depends on the how quickly or how early it has been detected and treated you know and the more positive 
uh, your outlook will be if the treatment starts at the early stage you know and if it's left left untreated it can lead to more widespread infections and it may infection may spread to blood and it can cause death as well you know so the early detection and diagnosis and the treatment is very important thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more information every day thank you and goodbye